In this video, I'm going to show you how to do activity two, and that's the table structures and validation. Let's just have a look at the paper and see what we've got to do. So we've created our table structures in activity one. We now need to put on the validation. We've got to make sure that in the staff record that the surname must be present. We've also in the staff table, we've also got to make sure that the start date is present. We've got to make sure that the telephone number is in the correct format. And you can look back at the sample data uh, to see what the format should be. And that is five numbers for a code, a space, and then six numbers for a telephone, for the telephone number. We need to make sure that the number of days work is not below two and we also need to make sure that the number of days is not above five and that the information for that was in the scenario and if you look at the data again it's between two and five and the final thing is that we need to make sure that a staff record will not save unless the grade id is valid and we do that because we've created a relationship where grade ID is a foreign key in the staff record, we can demonstrate that through the drop down that's provided when we create the staff member. OK, when we've done that, we can complete the Activity 2 template. And I'm going to show you how to do that and also to maximise your marks or show you where not to lose marks when you complete that. So let's go to the database. OK, so the first thing is making sure the staff name is present. So we need the staff table on for that. Go into design view. Click on the staff name. And let me just close down this property sheet. That's better. And if we go to the validation rule here, we're going to put is not null. You know, so key that in all in lowercase. When I click off it, it will capitalise the words and I know it's correct then. And always put a validation message in, must be present. It's not appropriate for this exam to put required yes. That's normally set to no. Let's let me set that back to no. If you set required to yes and allow zero or length no, that won't get you any marks in the exam. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is the start date, and it's a very similar thing, this start date. Again, go to the validation rule, is not null. Again, I've keyed in, in lowercase, when I go off it, it will capitalise, and that indicates to me that they are acceptable words for access. Again, make sure you put a validation text in. And the next one is we need to make sure that the staff telephone number is in the correct format. So the format for the telephone number, we're going to use an input mask. And I'm going to use the build for this, just to show you this. OK, and it's on a phone number for UK um, and to do that you click on edit list right normally it says phone number there key, key in phone number UK and then we're going to put in the input mask so remember the zero represents where the users got to enter a number so we've got five zeros space and then six zeros now just make sure this is going to display in the correct format. If you do a close there and then next, it shows you the input mask that you're going to be using and it shows you the placeholder, so underscore. You can change that if you want, but you can leave it as underscore and then next. And then this is the important bit to check to make sure that the um, telephone number is displayed in the correct format. And if you look, this is set on without symbols in the mask like that. So the space has disappeared. But if you look at the top one, it's got the space in. So we need to select that one. Next and finish. And that's the input mask. 
Okay, let's just see what the next thing we've got to do. A record for the staff member will not save if the number of days the work is below the accepted range. And a record for a staff member will not save if the number of days they work is above an accepted range. So let's go to day week and the validation rule here is going to be between two and five. And again, when I tick off that, it'll capitalise the between and the and. And again, always put a validation message text in for the user. Let's have a look, see what the next one is. Uh, the last one is record for a staff member will not save if the performance grade ID is invalid. OK, and we've already set this up. If we click on grade ID, then come to look up. There's the evidence that you've actually set that up because it's going to get the grade ID from TBL grade. It won't allow you to key in anything that's not on that list. So we've set up the validation and we're ready now to complete our activity two sheet. And what we've got to do on this is show the design of each table, showing the structure, including fields and data types, and then the validation, including just one suitable example for these, a presence check, a length check, a value lookup or a range check, a table lookup, and that's on a foreign key and a format check. Let's open our Word document. OK, so this is the sample template you get in the exam. The first part is the table structures, so we need to add screen prints for each of the tables in the design, showing the table names, the field names and the data types only. Let's go and get some screenshots of our database. So we can get the tables. If we just go to table design, let's start off with staff. And we just have to make sure that we're showing all the fields, table name, the field names and the data types. We're not at this stage showing the property sheet that goes with each field. I'm going to use snipping tool. You probably need to resize these. Go back to the database. So we've done the staff table. Let's do the grade one next. Back to the database, and we'll do a position, and then the last one is staff position. Okay, we're now on the validation, and the first thing we've got to do is this presence check. Now, the presence check we could use either the surname or the start date. I'll just use surname and you'll see why in a minute. So go back to the staff table, click on surname. Okay, and this time we'll just bring this up because we need to there we go. So that's the bit that they're interested in. Make sure it's on surname and you can see that it's not null on the surname. Okay, and then the next one is the length check. Now, we can use the same image, image for this. I'll just pop it on the next page. Because the surname, we've changed the length to 10. So I can literally just paste that in again. Okay, that's that.
So we've done the length check. The next one is the value lookup or the range check. In this database, you can do the range check here. We haven't actually got a value lookup. When it's talking about the value lookup, it's where you've created a little list yourself for the user to select from. But we haven't got an example of this in this database. So the one we're going to use here is going to be um, the days per week. Let's go back to database, look at days per week and make sure that the uh, validation's there. Next one is the table lookup. And read this carefully, as a lot of students make a mistake with this one. This one is a table lookup. It's about the foreign key. So there's a number of different places in this database or a number, a number of different uh, yeah, places where you could demonstrate this. We'll do the easiest one, that's that grade ID in the staff table. So we'll click on grade ID, make sure you're on this lookup tab. And that's the evidence of setting up the foreign key in a, a lookup table. And then finally, we've got this format check. And the format check in this case is going to be the telephone number. Again, make sure you're on the general tab for this. And there's the input mask. OK, so let's just recap what we've done. We're on Activity 2 template. Two parts to this. The first part is demonstrating your table structures. So you need screen prints, which show your tables in design view, showing the table names, the field names and the data types only. And then the second part is about the validation. We need a presence check. In this case, that was on the surname. Always use is not null. Always make sure you enter some validation text. And we've got length check just to demonstrate that you have changed a short text field. You can use the same image for the surname because that one we changed the field size to 10. The next one is either a value lookup or a range check. In this database, we haven't got a value lookup. We have got a range check, and that's on the days per week. Again, there's a validation rule. Make sure uh, you put some validation text in as well. And we've got a table lookup, and this is for a foreign key. So any one of your foreign keys, I've chosen this grade ID one and the demonstration of it being uh, a table lookup is when we click on the lookup tab. And it shows there that it's a combo box. It's based on a table and it's selecting from TBL grade, grade ID. And then the format check in this case is the telephone number and it is an input mask. Just make sure when you're setting up that input mask, go through the build and make sure it's going to display exactly uh, how you're expecting it to and not take out any spaces or anything. And then the final thing you need to do now with this activity too, go back to the paper, is make sure you save it as a PDF using the file name activity two underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name so that's activity do completed once you've done that you can now key in the data let's just have a look at the data a minute before you start doing that sometimes it can be a bit tricky working from this sample data because they've got the columns or the fields all mixed up so if you find it difficult, what I suggest you do is take a highlight pen with you and just highlight the things that go into the tables together. I'll just show you an example. OK, so let's just highlight the staff, stuff that's going in staff. So it's staff ref, surname, staff days per week. Staff start date, 
staff leave date, the position ID, position start don't go in staff, telephone numbers go in, in staff, and also remember that grade ID, the performance grade, that's going in as well, but it's also going in another table as well. Okay, so they're all yellow. And then, for example, the position. Let's do that in a different colour. Do that in pink. So anything to do with the position. So that's position ID. And I think the position at the end here. And then let's do the grade one. So we've got the performance grade ID. Right, that is also going in the staff one, but it's going in its own table. So in its own table, we've got the performance grade ID and also the descriptor. So it just helps you sort of think, if you colour things, it just makes it a little bit easier. The other thing, just to make sure when you're entering your data, you don't want any duplicate records. And if we look at this sample data, we've got four entries for Ahmed. The only reason why there's two entries for Ahmed is because he's got two positions. What you've got to make sure is that you don't enter Ahmed twice in the staff table. Ahmed only needs to be entered once in the staff table. And these two positions will be sorted out when you enter the, the staff position table. Just be careful with your data. OK, that's the end of the uh, video for Activity 2. Set up all the validation, complete Activity 2 and um, template and then enter all the data. In the next video, we're going to be looking at activity three, which is creating the queries and the report.